Hello, uh, I'm back again with the last books that I've read the past month-ish, and here they are. So the first story I read was called 101 True Scary Stories to Read in Bed Tonight, compiled by Lane Loomis, and the summary is as follows. This book contains 101 bite-sized horror stories that are intended to scare and unsettle you. These are real people's accounts of the creepy and occult, of their near misses with madmen and paranormal entities. Each chapter is a short standalone campfire tale, a retelling of a frightening or gruesome incident that has stuck with the teller something that gives them pause to this day when they find themselves alone in the dark. These stories have been collected with the knowledge that real life is scarier than fiction. I thought this was a great collection of short stories. Um, very, very short. They're like only a couple paragraphs per story. I'm much more terrified of things like home invasions as opposed to paranormal experiences. Um, I'm a bit of a skeptic, so those things just don't bother me as much. Uh, this was a good read for me because most of the scares were believable and rooted in reality. I just wish the stories were just a little bit longer and or gave us insight as to what happened um, after the event. I would recommend this book if you are like me uh, and believe that other humans are way scarier than any ghost stories. If I had to rate this book, I'd give it four deluxe ham sandwiches out of five. Uh, the next book I read was called Born to Bleed by Ryan C. Thomas, and the summary is as follows. It's been ten years since Roger Huntington suffered through the bloody events in Skinny Man's basement. Ten years since the game of chance, the dismemberment, the torture, and the grisly deaths. Roger has moved to California where he now works as a painter and pines after his co-worker Victoria. It's a seemingly bland life, which is how he likes it. But just as he can't forget about his past, he is about to discover that his future may hold far more terrifying events than anything he could possibly imagine. I really enjoyed this book. It was very action-packed and very disturbing. I highly suggest that you go into this book blind. That is, if you haven't checked out my breakdown on the book already. It's just wild, and I would bet money that you don't know where it's going to end up. It's a bit outlandish, but that's by design. Um, I would definitely recommend this book, but be aware that it is a sequel to a book called The Summer I Died which is also on my read list. Um, I just read this one first because it came up first on the disturbing book list, um, and I was unaware it was a sequel at the time. Uh, I don't necessarily think you need to read the first book to enjoy this, but you totally could. Anyway, yes, I would recommend this book, and I would give it four really annoying mosquitoes out of five. The next bit of media I consumed was a collection of lectures called American Ghosts with Adam Jortner, and the summary is as follows. Cackling witches in Puritan communities calling forth Satan, sea serpents squirming along coasts to snack on bathers, ape creatures slinking through forests and leaving behind mysterious footprints. In America, tall tales of monsters walking among us have existed for hundreds of years. Real or fictional, human or inhuman, monsters and other terrors directly reflect the events within American culture. As a society changes, its anxiety changes. I really like that line. And its monsters change as well. Thus, any confrontation with America's monsters is, in truth, a confrontation with the history of fear in America. Grab a flashlight and go monster hunting in the safe company of Adam Jortner, award-winning professor of religion at Auburn University, with the ten eerie and illuminating episodes of American Monsters. You'll encounter chilling tales of living houses, sentient plants, psychotic toys, brain-eating zombies, and otherworldly beings whose mere name is enough to drive people insane. 
Along the way, you'll learn how monster stories change how Americans think and what Americans do. How they shape the history of our country and what secrets about human nature these inhuman monsters can share. American monsters are mythical, but in many ways, monster stories are frighteningly real. The most terrifying thing about them, what they reveal about the monsters within us. Um, I quite enjoyed these lectures. Um, they're free with an Audible subscription. Each lecture is about like 30 minutes long and goes over a different time period in our history. I especially liked the lectures about witches, cryptozoology, and slashers. Um, if you have an Audible subscription, I would definitely recommend giving them a listen. Furthermore, if you don't have an Audible subscription, this is one of the things that I might use to sell you on getting an Audible subscription. Um, they were fascinating and well-researched. If I had to rate it, I'd give it five slabs, units, reams of yellow wallpaper. And that was pretty much all I read this month. Um, I am currently reading a book called Endless Night. And I don't remember the author offhand, I forget. Um, but that will probably be next on my breakdown list. Um, after that, I'm reading Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, thanks, you guys. I really appreciate you giving this a listen or a watch. Um, my last video blew up, like, really quickly, which was really cool. It got to, like, 200 views in, like, a week. I think, which was pretty cool. So if you watched through the whole video and you think that what I do is interesting or uh, thought provoking or anything like that, um, go ahead and subscribe if you don't mind. That would be really awesome. Um, I'm at 66 subscribers right now, I believe which is pretty cool. I didn't think that I would ever get past like 10. So um, that's really exciting for me. Uh, thank you guys so much. I love you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.